Hi, this is Dr. Kenya Coleman. I am joined by my colleague, Anita Hughes. And today, we will provide an overview of functional behavior assessment and behavior intervention planning in DC public schools. Let us begin by reviewing IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and its relationship to behavior assessments. IDEA in 1997, as well as its reauthorization in 2004, IDEA in 1997, as well as its reauthorization in 2004, has placed a strong emphasis on positive behavioral interventions and supports as a proactive measure to address challenging behavior. To effectively meet the mandate of PBIS, DC Public Schools has implemented a multi-tiered model of support wherein students receive supports based upon their response to intervention, or RTI. The Functional Behavioral Assessment Level 1 is the behavior assessment DC public school social workers use to determine RTI. In addition, IDEA has identified a Functional Behavior Assessment Level 2 as an evidence-based tool to develop and implement positive interventions more effectively based on the context and function of the behavior. So what is the Functional Behavior Assessment Level 1, or FBA 1? The FBA 1 is DCPS's universal screening tool that social workers will use to support students in Tiers 2 and or 3 of RTI. At Tier 2, Social workers intervene by providing support groups for grief and loss and other comparable psychological stressors, focused skills training groups such as social skills and anger management groups, attendance interventions, and teacher consultation. At Tier 3, social workers typically offer group or individual counseling, psychoeducation, crisis intervention, and coordinate services with community-based providers in addition to the support offered at Tiers 1 and 2. An FBA 1 can also be used when Tier 1 supports have been unsuccessful in meeting the behavioral challenges of the student. Tier 1 interventions are universal, meaning they are available to all students. Tier 1 interventions include school-wide behavior modification programs. An FPA 1 should be conducted when general education students have behavioral concerns that have not been effectively addressed within the school community. The information gleaned from the FPA 1 is used to inform a behavior intervention plan level 1. The FBA 1 is a structured interview consisting of 19 questions. The questions are divided into five sections to help the social worker define the problem behaviors, develop a hypothesis about the function of the behaviors, and identify more adaptive replacement behaviors. The five sections include defining behavior, context, functional hypothesis, teaching replacement behaviors, maintaining consequences and reinforcement. The interview should be completed with a person who is familiar with the student's behavior presentation in the academic environment. What is the difference between an FBA 1 and an FBA 2? An FBA 1 is a simplified method of obtaining specific descriptive information about problematic student behavior. It is designed to reveal why a student engages in specific behaviors and to facilitate dialogue that guides problem solving to reduce problematic behaviors. An FBA 2 is a formal assessment tool 
that is mandated for emotionally disturbed students and can be used for other students with other SPED disabilities and a history of suspensions. Conducting an FBA-2 involves the collection of information over time and across settings to understand why a student engages in particular behaviors. The analysis of data collected through both direct and indirect observation informs the team why a student behaves as he or she does and provides important data toward intervention planning. Unlike the FBA-2, the FBA-1 does not require extensive collection and analysis of data. The only document that is required to make an assessment is the FBA-1 structured interview. As it relates to general education students with behavioral concerns, a general education student with a difficult behavior with no current IEP or 504 plan has two options. That student can either be referred to the SST and have an FBA-1 completed and or the student can be referred to the social worker for mental health consultation. If the student is referred to the SST and the FBA-1 is completed, then the SST would need to hold a meeting and review the results. There are three possible results. The FBA-1 and BIP-1 completed with fidelity, meaning completed as described on both documents. If this is the case and no improvement in the student's behavior has been observed and there are academic concerns, then that student needs to be referred to special education. If the SST finds that the FBA-1 was completed with fidelity and there was no improvement in the student's behavior, but there are no academic concerns, then an FBA-2 should be completed and the student should be referred to the 504 team. Lastly, if the FBA-1 is not completed with fidelity, then the FBA-1 should be completed with fidelity and a BIP-1 should also be completed. For special education students with behavioral concerns, if it is a student with a disability that is not ED, an FBA-1 can be completed. If the FBA-1 is completed with fidelity and there is no improvement in the student's behavior, the student's team needs to review the FBA-1 and modify and repeat the FBA-1. If the FBA-1 is not completed with fidelity, then it needs to be completed with fidelity and monitored for its effectiveness. If the student is a student with emotional disturbance or is a student with another disability and a history of suspensions, then an FBA-2 and BIP-2 should be completed. A monitoring plan should be established based upon the student's developmental level and the documents should be implemented and revised as necessary, updating at least annually. In DCPS, special education students with a disability classification of emotionally disturbed receive FBA tools with the goal of teaching pro-social replacement behaviors that achieve the same function. Autistic students can receive either an FBA 1 or a 2 depending on the complexity of their behavior. When an autistic student is working with and receiving interventions from a applied behavior analyst, he or she takes the lead in completing the FBA. An FBA 2 serves as a problem solving process for addressing problem behaviors that impact the educational setting and student performance. 
It serves to determine the function or motivation of students' behavior by, by relying on a variety of techniques to identify specific behaviors. When completing an FBA, information is collected on the various conditions under which a student is most and least likely to be a successful learner. That information can be collected both indirectly and directly and allow school personnel to hypothesize the circumstances under which the problem behavior is likely and not likely to occur. A behavior intervention plan, level two, derives from an FBA 2. With regard to the FBA 2 guidelines, an FBA 2 must be conducted when, number one, a student's behavior is interfering with his or her educational progress in the environment or the education of the student's peers before or no later than 10 school days after the start or removal that constitutes a disciplinary change in placement. It should be conducted when a general education student has more than 15 school day suspensions cumulatively in a school year. It should occur when a special education student has 10 or more suspensions cumulatively in a school year. The FBA 2 should be conducted there is exclusion of even one school day for a student with an intellectual disability, which was formerly mental retardation. When days 11 through 15 constitute a pattern of exclusion, it should be conducted when a student has the disability of emotional disturbance or autism. On the request of attorneys, advocates, parents, or the MDT team with the contribution from the social worker. And finally, when a student is suspended from the school bus and transportation is prescribed on his or her IEP. So we're going to look at the process of reviewing um, an FBA 2. And the first task involved is to identify the problem. We want to identify the problem behavior before an FBA 2 is initiated as it's necessary to identify the specific behavior, the specific behavior causing learning or discipline problems and to define that behavior in concrete terms that are easy to communicate and simple to measure. Number two, we want to collect data using multiple sources. Once the behavior has been operationalized, gather information using multiple sources to determine the function of the behavior. Number three, we analyze the data which we carefully consider and examine what you have learned about the student's problem behavior, being mindful of patterns and the conditions under which the behavior occur. Number four, we make determinations and a hypothesis. And finally, we develop a BIP, a Behavior Intervention Plan 2. So we want to look at the data collection tools um, that DCPS uses when, when completing an FBA 2. There are three major um, tools that DCPS uses. The first is the Motivational Assessment Scale, the Problem Behavior Questionnaire, and the Functional Assessment Screening Tool. There are a couple points to remember in completing the Functional Behavior Assessment tools. The FBA template and say it says cannot be used. Instead, the FBA word template is now the policy mandate. The template and says does not capture what needs to be captured. There's no hard data. It's not designed to track students' behavior and can be complete, can be completed and manipulated by other staff in the system. So let's look at the relationship between the FBA two and the behavior intervention plan two. A behavior intervention plan two should be positive and instructive based on the data collected while developing the FBA and it should address effective reteaching of the expected behavior, rewards and consequences that are personally meaningful to the student as no two plans are alike, and it should provide for opportunities to self-manage behaviors. So there are some things that we would like to consider when developing a BIP two. The purpose of the BIP2 is to address the identified function of the behavior. So now we are going to address some frequently asked questions as it relates to the completion of an FBA1, FBA2, BIP1, and BIP2.
What are the differences between a functional behavior assessment level one and a functional behavior assessment level two? An FBA one is a simplified method of obtaining specific descriptive information about problematic student behavior. It is designed to reveal why a student engage in, engages in specific behaviors and facilitates a dialogue that guides problem solving to reduce problematic behaviors. A level one behavior intervention plan is derived from the FBA one process. It is primarily used with students in the general education. An FBA two is a formal assessment tool reserved for students refers to special education eligibility and SPED students. Conducting an FBA involves the collection of information over time and across settings to understand why a student engages in particular behaviors. The analysis of data collected through both direct and indirect observation informs a team of potential intervention strategies. A level two behavior intervention plan is derived from the FBA two process. Do you need parental consent to conduct an FBA one, FBA two, or to develop a BIP? Universal and targeted tools and, and interventions that are used with any student do not require parental consent. An FBA-1 is considered an intervention tool that can be used across tiers and thus does not require parental consent. Behavior plans can also be developed across tiers and do not require parental consent. Although parental consent is not a requirement in developing behavior plans, it is prudent of school teams to both inform and involve parents when there are behavior concerns and the development of plans where possible. No. The FBA too must have parental consent because it is a formal special education assessment. Does a BIP too have to follow an FBA too? Yes. The analysis of an FBA-2 should always result in the development of a plan to address problematic behaviors. It is the expectation that the function of the student behavior is learned through this process and interventions to address unwanted behaviors are targeted based on that information. Can you develop a behavior plan without an FBA? Yes, there are instances when the development of a behavior plan is appropriate without conducting an FBA-1 or an FBA-2. Students, students in general education who exhibit minor behavioral concerns that can be managed through a common set of behavior strategies across the school could benefit from a behavior plan. This is only useful when the purpose of the student's behavior is known to staff. Which data collection forms should be used when conducting an FBA-2? There's flexibility in choosing which forms of documentation are used when conducting an FBA. Examples of common FBA tools are the antecedent behavior consequences. The examples of common FBA tools are the antecedent behavior and consequences chart, the ABC chart, problem behavior questionnaire, and scatter platforms. The requirement is, however, to use at least three direct and indirect sources with at least one of those being direct observation. Under what circumstances should an FBA-1 or an FBA-2 be conducted? Any behavior that the school deems problematic can warrant conducting an FBA-1 or an FBA-2. When is an FBA and VIP mandatory? Pursuant to IDEA, if a student with any disability is suspended for 10 or more cumulative days within one school year, an FBA-2 and a BIP-2 must be completed and or reviewed. Additionally, students who are identified with an ED disability classification must have both an FBA-2 and a BIP-2. An FBA-2 must be completed at least every three years or if there are new behaviors not addressed in the current FBA-2. How often should an FBA-1 or FBA-2 be reviewed and who is accountable for this? Behavioral change takes time. Teams should consider developmental levels and set reasonable expectations for change to be visible. The following developmental guidance is suggested for monitoring student response to behavioral interventions. Three to six years old, it should be two to four weeks. Seven to nine years old, four to six weeks. 10 to 13 years old, six to nine weeks. And 14 years old, 
plus 10 weeks at minimum. School social workers have the responsibility of leading the FBA 1 or FBA 2 process. However, data collection, implementation of strategies, and monitoring for outcomes is the responsibility of all school staff that work with the student. What if I'm getting pushback from my staff to either implement or monitor this process? School stakeholders must collaborate in both the implementation and monitoring of the behavior intervention plans. Social workers leading the FBA 1 or FBA 2 process should inform school administration should inform school administrators if collaboration becomes a challenge. Your program manager, specialist, or special education specialist can also be a resource to ensure FBAs and BIPs are used as tools to support students and not conducted for the sole purpose of compliance with the law. Does an FBA have to be ordered and said? Yes. All FBAs for SPED students must be ordered in SEDs. All FBAs and VIPs should be uploaded in SEDs for both general education and SPED students. Does an FBA have to be ordered in SEDs? Yes, all FBAs for SPED students must be ordered in SEDs. All FBAs and VIPs should be uploaded into SEDs for special education students and in the PMA for general ed students. However, it should be noted that an FBA 2 is a mandated assessment for ED and autistic students. Therefore, after documenting three failed attempts to obtain parental consent, the MDT can move forward with completing the FBA 2 given their attempts at due diligence. If an FBA 1 has been conducted and the student is later referred to SPED with behavioral concerns, does an FBA 2 then need to be conducted? Yes. The initiation of SPED eligibility where behavior is an area of concern triggers a need to conduct an FBA 2. However, the information obtained from the FBA 1 can be used as a source of data within that analysis. If you have any questions regarding today's training that have gone unanswered, please feel free to contact us either via email or via phone. I can be reached at Kenya, K-E-N-Y-A dot Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N at D-C dot gov or via cell phone at area code 202-427-9399. I can be reached at Anita, A-N-I-T-A dot Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S at D-C dot gov or by cell 202-297-3863. Thank you for your time.